Before you start spending a bunch of money on riding gear, here's a summary of the basic types of gear and what they're best used for. When people buy motorcycles, everybody goes about the gear differently. Some people, the first day they have the bike, they already look like Dan Easy threw up on them. Other people buy a pair of sunglasses to keep the bugs out of their eyes and call it a day. Anything more than that pair of sunglasses can get very expensive, very fast. So let's look at the different types of gear and think about which one's gonna be best for the kind of riding you wanna do. Admittedly in the old days, my idea of safety equipment on a chopper or Harley was a pair of sunglasses, jeans, and a pair of biker boots. So the only actual protection I had with me was jimmies and a pistol. The closest thing I had to actual safety gear was the leather biker jacket and leather pants. You'd never see me in a helmet in those days, but you'd also never see me in shorts and flip-flops. When it comes to basics for motorcycle riding gear, you have several components. Starting top to bottom, you have a helmet, jackets, gloves, pants, and boots, as well as the Under Armour or whatever you've got on underneath your gear. For any of these components, there are a bunch of manufacturers and they all fit differently, they work differently, and so I'm just gonna tell you high level, here's the different types, and it'll be up to you to go figure out which brand you wanna buy, what your budget is, what kind of riding you do, and how important it is for comfort versus safety. First, let's talk about helmets. This is what we call a full face helmet because it comes around and it covers your entire face. It's got a shield on it. Some of them might also have a visor that comes down, but be careful of those because sometimes they aren't Snell rated, which may be a big deal if you're on a track or in a race event. One type of helmet that's been growing in popularity is the flip-up type, which looks a lot like the full face, except it's hinged, so the jaw part can actually flip up with the windscreen on it. It's not something that I choose to use, I just feel better having it all one solid piece, but there are a lot of people that do use them. For me, a full face is also more practical for things like camera mounts and Bluetooth devices as well. There are also the half-shell helmets. These are a lot more popular in the cruiser world, and basically, they're just from here up. So it's still open face. It is usually found in states where they have helmet laws or where somebody is being yelled at to wear a helmet because it's the most minimalistic helmet you can ask for. Because it covers the top part of your skull, yes, it's going to help protect you if you bang your head against something in a wreck. However, if you go sliding through a field on your bike, you're still gonna be using your jaw for a shovel. The only time I've actually worn one of those half shells is in the states that required it when I rode the chopper from Texas to Florida for Biketoberfest. Yes, it allows that wind in your face feeling, but to me it felt really awkward having all that weight or mass up on top, catching the wind. For me, honestly, a full face is gonna be more comfortable. It's going to actually protect you better and it'll allow easier for things like the Bluetooth that I mentioned already. Now let's think about the kind of riding you're gonna do. If your only intent is to go to the track then something like this, one piece leathers, is gonna be your go-to. It's gonna offer the most protection. Leather is the best for abrasion, as opposed to the other materials we'll talk about in a minute. It also is gonna have the most armor. You're gonna get the plates here. You're gonna get all kinds of armor, like this entire forearm and the elbow puck. You've got this back here that not only is for safety if you go down, but it's also good for aerodynamics. And you've got plenty in the legs as well. So one piece leather like this is gonna be your safest bet. Some tracks and events may actually allow a two piece leather design if the two zip together in the back. So you wanna check the rule book on whatever event or track you're going to to make sure that you don't show up and realize you can't ride because you don't have the right gear. Because the track is where you're doing some very high speeds and you're usually pushing your limits a lot more, this is where you also want the most protection in terms of gloves and a boot. Now, especially in places like Texas here, it gets really hot in the summers. So you wanna think a little bit about ventilation. There are ventilation options for gloves, for boots, and this is actually a perforated leather, so it just breathes a little better while you're moving. Now, as far as Under Armour or whatever you've got on under your suit, you definitely wanna wear something if you're in leathers. Try putting that leather suit on without anything underneath once and have more than two drops of sweat and you'll understand why you always wanna wear it because you'll never get out of the thing, it sticks. So Under Armour is not only more comfortable to wear, but it's also more practical trying to get in and out of the suit. If you're riding in the streets mostly, you can absolutely use the same one piece leathers and the boots and gloves and everything you do at the track because it's going to offer you the most protection. Most riders don't really like wearing a one piece in the streets because it's more awkward if you gotta to go to the bathroom or you're going to a restaurant. If you have a two piece, at least you can take the jacket off while you're just sitting down in a restaurant, it's more comfortable and you're not gonna sit there and sweat so bad. 
and you can move around the restaurant without having to tie your sleeves together around your waist like on a onesie. Now, like I said, leather is gonna have the best abrasion properties. In other words, if you go sliding down the highway, leather will hold up the best and protect your skin. And I was glad I had leather on when I tumbled down the highway after deer hunting with the Aprilia. But even the perforated can get really uncomfortable when you're stuck in traffic in the heat. The next level down in terms of safety, but up in terms of cool would be textile. This is a textile jacket, and those are the textile pants to match. It's a synthetic material. It's not gonna be quite as abrasion proof as what leathers will be, but it is gonna be lighter and cooler. This particular jacket has a zip in liner as well, which is nice because it gives you the flexibility of wearing it on a hot day where you need the breeze coming through. But if it's a little cool or rainy, you can put the liner in to keep you warm and dry. And this jacket also has the zipper on the back so that you can zip the jacket to the pants to keep them together. The lightest material you're gonna find is going to be the mesh. Of the three materials that'll offer the least protection in terms of abrasion and wear resistance compared to the textile or the leathers, but it's also gonna be the lightest and coolest. You can actually see right through the material except for where there's padding. As you work down from the leathers to the textile with the mesh, you'll also wanna look at what you're giving up in terms of armor. The leathers are gonna have everything from the hump back here. You've got shoulder protection up here. You've got a whole forearm of it and the elbows. You've got some pieces up here. You've got the whole knee and the whole shin and you got the pucks, elbow pucks. So again, this is gonna be your safest bet. With something like the textile, I still have something on the shoulder and I've got some padding and armor down here. It's not quite as stout as what the onesie is, but it still does have some protection. But if you're going to be carving canyons and you plan to be dragging a knee at some point, you'll notice that when you get away from the race leathers, you're also giving up that puck. So there is a pad, you know, sort of here. It's, again, not quite as stout as the onesie is, but you don't have that puck anymore. So if you end up dragging a knee in something like textile or mesh, you're probably going to ruin them and end up having a hole there. So you want to think about, again, what kind of riding are you going to do? And then something like the mesh, you can see we don't even have the shoulder armor up here. It's got some pads here and there's some on the knees as well. But again, it's trade-off. You're gonna have the coolest, lightest gear here, but you're also gonna have the least protection from both an abrasion and an armor standpoint. So you're gonna be cooler wearing something like this, but if you go down, you're probably gonna end up one big scab. Now, just cause something's made out of leather doesn't mean it's protected. The old biker jacket that I've got here and leather pants, there's no armor in this at all. So this kind of gear would have great abrasion resistance, but no actual armor, which means if I would have crashed while I was using these on the old chopper, my skin would have been intact, but I probably would have broken a few calcium sticks. Same kind of principles go for gloves. You've got these nice armored ones that have all the different wear materials and everything in here and armor to it. But if you're riding in hot weather, you might want something like this. They're smaller, they're lighter, they're cooler, They've got vents here as well, so that might be more comfortable in heat, but again, aren't gonna offer the protection as these if you do go down. These city boots are actually for hot weather, so they are ventilated and they are pretty cool. In fact, if it gets down below, say 50 or so, your feet will almost get cold because of how well they're ventilated. And this is another reason why Under Armour or similar materials are good is because as you're sweating, this is going to wick the moisture off you to keep you a little bit cooler. It's also gonna prevent you from soaking your leather and sweat quite so bad because you can't just throw those in the washing machine like you can the Under Armour. Now let's say it gets a little chilly out, maybe in the 50s or whatever. You can still use the same gear, but maybe the perforated leather is a little cool. So what you do is change from the thin Under Armour to the insulated stuff that's gonna be a little bit warmer and maybe some warmer socks inside your boots as well. Now, if you're out riding in say the 30s or 40s, then you're probably gonna wanna look at something more like this. This is a one piece insulated kind of weatherproof suit. This is not only warmer, keeps you dry, but I've also found it to be very comfortable. It's a little bit bigger and that's kind of how they tell you to size it. So I can actually wear my street clothes in this thing. I could put a hoodie on over it. I can carry a side holster if I want. There's plenty of room, so it allows you to move around the bike. Even in the cold, you're probably not gonna be all over the bike anyway, because your tires are not gonna grip as well. But regardless, it's a lot more comfortable. So when you get where you're going, you can take the whole thing off and you're dressed in your street clothes, put on the boots again or whatever. Now the most vulnerable spot that I've found when it gets cold is the neck because you have this gap between the suit, whatever you're wearing, jacket, and the helmet. So you can try something like this to keep your neck warm or the little ninja hoods or whatever you want, but just be advised that's gonna be your weak spot. 
Now, depending on if your bike has heated grips or not, you might end up going with something warmer. These are a splitting, and the reason for this is you keep a couple fingers together to keep warmer, but also most of us ride with two fingers on the levers, both sides. So this allows your kind of lobster claw or whatever to keep two fingers on the grip and two on the lever, and they'll keep you a lot warmer than normal gloves. But again, they don't offer any protection. You can see there's no armor on this, and they're just synthetic. So if you go flying down the highway, you're gonna hurt your hands. You're also gonna wanna think about your feet. You can get insulated socks that'll help, but you're probably gonna want something a little bit better for a boot that's warmer and also keeps the rain out. Now, if you really wanna be fancy, they do have electrically heated gear as well that you plug into a port on your bike, depending on what you've got. I've never used the heated gear before. This is good enough for anything I'll be doing. And again, as you move away from the ideal climate track leathers, you are gonna be giving up armor for comfort, so you're not gonna have as much padding and plates and everything as what you do on the one piece. You're not gonna build your gear collection like this overnight. This is something that I've been assembling for over 30 years of riding now, and I even have a couple girls' jackets and boots and helmet and gloves in case I wanna take a passenger with me. So the best thing to do is just think about what your normal riding conditions are going to be and get a set of gear for that. Get the basic components of your boots, your pants, your gloves, your jacket, your helmet, figure that out, look at some different options, decide what kind of material based on when you plan on riding and what the weather's gonna be like, or things like options like zip and liners. And you're gonna learn over time what brands fit you better or that you like, the little features in that. They all vary so much and unfortunately a lot of times you don't realize you didn't actually like that item until you've already bought it. Uh, that's just part of the deal. So the more research you do up front, the happier you're gonna be with your gear. Unfortunately, motorcyclists either fall into the categories of they have wrecked or they're going to wreck. So it's important to make sure that you choose gear that's going to be safe for you, but you also want to avoid the wreck in the first place. So make sure that you're comfortable in terms of you don't have numb fingers that aren't gonna be able to grab the levers, you don't have numb toes that you're not gonna be able to feel the brake pedal or the shifter, and you're not sweating profusely and feel like you're gonna stroke out or something. Plus make the ride enjoyable. Trust me, if you get out for a couple hours on a bike and you've got a boot too small or a helmet too small or something that doesn't fit right, it really takes the fun out of it and you're gonna get distracted by those little things. So find a set of gear that you're happy with and hopefully this gives you a nice summary of the different types of gear and the things to think about so you can go get set up with your first set of gear and get out and ride. Subscribe to my YouTube channel below and let's celebrate turning fuel and air into adrenaline.